election night is 40 days away, but in today's video, I will give you my latest predictions for each state as their polls close on November 5th, breaking it down hour by hour. Now back in the 2020 cycle, my final prediction before the election correctly predicted the outcome in 49 of 50 states. Starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, the polls will close in six states. We'll start in Indiana and Kentucky. Now, these are solid states for former President Trump. He carried Indiana by 16 points in 2020 and Kentucky by 25. He should also carry South Carolina by a double-digit margin. While not quite as deep red as many of the other southern states, it did vote for Trump by roughly 12 percentage points in 2020 and has not gone blue since 1976. As for Vice President Harris, she will easily win Vermont, arguably the bluest state in the nation. Our two remaining states, Virginia and Georgia, are both more competitive. Joe Biden carried Virginia's 13 electoral votes by 10 points in 2020, but this year's race is shaping up to be much closer. Before he dropped out, polls were even showing Trump leading Biden in the real clear polling average. Now with Harris as the nominee, she does lead Trump by an average of 4.5 points across the last four polls. That is still underperforming compared to Biden's 2020 margin. In fact, a University of Mary Washington poll has her lead within the margin of error at just two points, making Virginia only a lean blue state on my map. That is downgraded from its once likely to almost solid status entering this cycle. Now let's head down to Georgia with its 16 electoral votes. This is one of the seven key battlegrounds on this map. It actually went for Biden in 2020 by just 0.2%, the narrowest margin of any state in that election, and the first time that Georgia had voted for a Democrat since 1992. Now that win was largely driven by an exceptionally high turnout among black voters, specifically in and around Atlanta, one of the fastest growing and diversifying cities in the entire country that has attracted significant numbers of young, college-educated, left-leaning voters from other parts of the country in search of job opportunities. Yet fast forward to 2024, and Trump has made notable gains among black voters. If you look here at the aggregated polling crosstabs, he is up nearly 18 points with this demographic compared to 2020. Now since Harris became the Democratic nominee, she has managed to claw back at some of that ground compared to Biden, but even so, any losses whatsoever among black voters might prove fatal for Democrats given how narrow their margin in 2020 was. As per the latest polling averages, Trump is currently leading by just over two percentage points. Now personally, I do tend to see Georgia as one of the more fundamentally Republican battlegrounds. It does have a more religious, and thereby socially conservative population, that won't be as activated by issues like abortion compared to the Rust Belt trio of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, or the Southwest battlegrounds for that matter, like Arizona and Nevada and the betting markets do seem to reflect that sentiment as well. Trump is given a 61% chance of winning in Georgia on poly market, actually better than his current odds are in North Carolina, which Trump won twice. So on our electoral map, I am putting Georgia in the tilt Republican category. Next up, it's 7.30 p.m. on election nights. Voting will end in Ohio, West Virginia, and North Carolina. Starting with West Virginia, this is one of the most Republican states in the country. Trump is a lock here as he won it by 40 points in the last election, and there's just no sign of that changing this time around. Moving on to Ohio, once considered the ultimate bellwether state, from 1896 to 2016, the party that won Ohio won the presidency in all but three elections. However, it is now a strongly Republican-leading state, as Trump carried it by 8 points in 2016 and again in 2020, and the latest polling average does show him ahead by 9 points, so on our electoral map, Ohio is a likely Republican state for Trump. Finally, in North Carolina, always a competitive state and our second of the seven key battlegrounds, despite its competitive nature, Democrats have not won a federal election here since 2008, as Republican candidates have taken the last eight presidential and U.S. Senate races, all by margins of less than six points. Most recently, Trump carried North Carolina in 2020 by just over a point, and the polling averages right now show him leading by a razor-thin margin of 0.7%. 
Out of the 11 polls included in this average, Trump leads in seven, while Harris is up in four, but neither has held a lead outside the margin of error. And as we saw earlier, betting markets do notably see North Carolina as even closer than Georgia, giving Trump a 56% chance here. Now, personally, I think traders might be suffering from noise here. Democrats have consistently underperformed polls in the final results, and until that changes, I'll probably keep giving Republicans the benefit of the doubt here. On my map, I am putting North Carolina in the tilt Republican category, joining Georgia, and honestly, I think it's closer to lean than it is to toss up. So after the first two poll closings, Trump is off to an early electoral vote lead with 84 votes to Kamala Harris's 16. Remember, 270 votes are needed to win the presidency. Before we move on to the 8 o'clock closings, quick reminder, less than 20% of you are currently subscribed. So please take a second to click that red button below. It's completely free and it does help me out a ton. Thanks a lot. Alrighty, let's move on to the 8 p.m. poll closings. It's the single largest of the nights, covering a massive 172 electoral votes. This includes three key battlegrounds, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Florida, as well as Nebraska's second congressional district, which as compared to most of Nebraska is located in the central time zone. I should also note that a majority of Texas will close at 8 p.m. except for El Paso, located here in the far western corner of the state, which remains open until 9 p.m. So we'll hold off on making any calls statewide in Nebraska and Texas until after the full poll closing. Let's start by filling in the solid states for Harris. She will easily carry Maine's 1st Congressional District, which Biden carried by 23 points in 2020, and from there, she'll continue to dominate along the Northeast Coast, taking Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and of course, Washington, D.C. And she'll also come out on top in Illinois. Now, all of these states voted for Joe Biden by at least 15 points in 2020. And while we are seeing some signs of eroding Democratic support in big blue cities like Chicago and the New York metro area, there's still no reason to think that the statewide races will dip into single digits this time around. Meanwhile, Donald Trump should have no trouble holding the solid southern states, Oklahoma, Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. Each of these states went to Trump by at least 15 points in the last election and have not voted for a Democrat in at least seven cycles. As for the more competitive states at this hour, starting with Florida, there is a strong possibility that the Sunshine State, with its 30 electoral votes, could be called for Trump right when polls close at 8 p.m. That's because most of Florida actually closes an hour earlier at 7 p.m., that is, except for the panhandle, and Florida is known for reporting results incredibly fast, and Trump is expected to win Florida by a wider margin than any presidential candidate in recent memory. It was one of just five states where he improved his margin between 2016 and 2020 as he carried Florida by 3.4%, compared to just over a point in 2016. Now, the 2024 polls currently show him up by an average of six points exactly, with one poll even giving him a 10-point lead. So while no candidate from either party has won Florida by more than six points since George H.W. Bush in 1988, Trump could break that trend this November as it leans towards the GOP. Now let's turn to Pennsylvania, the most important state on the map, and the third of our seven key battlegrounds. With its 19 electoral votes, Pennsylvania is the most likely to decide the election. Nate Silver's forecast says there's a 33% chance that it will tip the balance. That is more than double the likelihood of any other states. Trump narrowly carried Pennsylvania in 2016 by 0.7%. But Biden flipped it back to the Democrats in 2020, winning by 1.2%. Prior to 2016, Pennsylvania had supported Democratic candidates in six straight presidential elections. Now again, the 2024 polls show we're headed for another extraordinarily close election. Harris leads by 0.6% at the moment, but the race remains extremely fluid, as six of the last 14 polls show a tie, while four have Harris in front, and the remaining four give Trump the edge. In other words, this is as much of a toss-up as you can get, and the betting markets reflect that as well, with Harris at 51% and Trump at 49%, essentially a coin flip. 
I guess that means that I have to rely on my personal take here. I generally believe that Harris is a weaker candidate in this region as compared to the Sun Belt, as she may struggle to replicate Biden's unique appeal in this region in 2020, specifically with older working class white voters. And of course, it's hard to ignore the demographic trends. This part of the country is moving to the right. Pennsylvania voted almost six points to the right of the nation in 2020, marking the second consecutive election in which Pennsylvania leaned more Republican than the country as a whole. And so given all of that, if I had to pick one candidate with the edge here, it would have to be Trump. As for New Hampshire and Maine, these are much more friendly to Democratic candidates. They do tend to fall in line with the rest of the deep blue Northeast region, though are typically more competitive, as New Hampshire voted blue for Joe Biden by 7 points in 2020, and he won Maine by 9. As of now, the polls show Harris leading by an average of 7.7% in New Hampshire and by an even wider margin in Maine. It would simply take a very favorable environment for Trump to flip either of these states, and both are likely to go for Harris at this point. And that leaves us with the competitive second districts in Maine and in Nebraska. Maine 02 is extremely rural and one of the oldest, whitest congressional districts in the entire country. Trump won it by seven points in 2020, and he should again win it by a comfortable margin this November. It is likely Republican. Nebraska 02, on the other hand, is almost the complete opposite. It's almost entirely urban, covering the city of Omaha, and Biden carried it by 6.5 points in 2020. It will lean towards Harris on this map. Continuing on to the next poll closing at 8.30 p.m., the polls are actually only closing in one state here, Arkansas. And this is a solid Trump state. It voted for him by 27 points in 2020. Our next major poll closing is at 9 p.m., which brings in the second largest chunk of electoral votes on the night, 162 in total. Now, I like to call this Battleground Central Time, as polls close in key states like Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Plus, of course, New York and a handful of less competitive states in the middle of the country. First, let's mark down the safe Republican states. Trump will easily carry North and South Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska statewide, along with the 1st and 3rd congressional districts, Kansas, and Louisiana. As for Iowa, it's teetering on the edge of being a safe Republican state, as just like Ohio, it did back Obama in 2008 and in 2012 before then swinging hard to Trump, who won it by 8 to 9 points in both 2016 and 2020. But since we have yet to see a single Trump versus Harris poll here, it is likely Republican for now. As for Kamala Harris, she is certain to carry New York with its 28 electoral votes. While New York has become slightly more competitive in recent years, this would not be the first time that it looked close in the polls, only to revert back to its solid blue nature. Joe Biden did carry it by 23 points in 2020, and Democrats have consistently carried New York by at least 10 points in every election since 1988. Harris is also expected to carry Colorado's 10 electoral votes by a solid margin. It's the fastest left-trending state in the nation, having backed Biden by 13.5 points in 2020. Now let's shift our focus back to the Midwest, with the remaining three states in the critical Blue Wall region, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Along with Pennsylvania, these states voted blue in every election from 1992 until 2016, hence Blue Wall, when Trump flipped Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania to the Republican column, and also came within two points of flipping Minnesota. Then in 2020, Biden managed to flip back Michigan by 2.8%, Wisconsin by just 0.6%, and he expanded the Democratic margin in Minnesota to 7 points. As such, Minnesota is fundamentally the bluest of the upper Rust Belt quartet, followed by Michigan, while Wisconsin is generally the most Republican-friendly. Now, the latest polling in Minnesota has Harris leading by around 5.5 points. That is still an underperformance compared to Biden's 2020 margin, but enough for it to still be in the lean blue column on the map. Now, Michigan and Wisconsin are both must-win states for Harris. Without them, her path to 270 electoral votes becomes very difficult to see, especially if she loses Pennsylvania. As per the latest polls, Harris is leading by exactly one point in Wisconsin, although the most recent poll actually has Trump ahead by that same margin. In Michigan, she does hold a slightly larger lead, nearly two points, and has led by as much as five points in some of them. 
Betting markets also favor Harris in both states. She has a 67% chance in Michigan, her strongest odds so far, and a narrower 56% chance in Wisconsin. Back on my electoral map, while I too have Michigan as a tilt blue state for Harris, for those of you who have been following this channel all cycle long, I continue to be skeptical of her chances in Wisconsin. That's because the Badger state was subject to the two largest polling errors underestimating Trump in both 2016 and 2020. So they underestimated him by almost 7 points against Clinton and by almost 8 points against Biden. Wisconsin is also whiter and more rural than both Michigan and Pennsylvania, with a demographic profile that is even more friendly to Republicans than a state like Nebraska. So if Trump manages to overperform among white, working-class voters like he did in 2016, Wisconsin will likely be the front line for that shift. I have it tilting in his direction. Now as for the Southwest, Trump is favored to win Texas in November, an ever-emerging battleground Joe Biden did receive 46.5% of the votes in 2020, more than any other Democrat since Jimmy Carter carried Texas in 1976. Yet with Republicans making significant gains among Hispanic voters, especially down here in the Rio Grande Valley, it's hard to see Democrats improving on their 2020 margin at this point. On a related note, New Mexico is the most Hispanic state in the nation, and therefore perhaps a sleeper swing state in future cycles. For now though, it is still likely blue after Biden's 11-point margin of victory in 2020, and the polls do show Harris leading by roughly 9 points right now on average. Finally, wrapping up the 9 o'clock closings in Arizona, the second closest state in 2020 by margin, Biden won Arizona by just 0.3%, with 49.4% to Trump's 49.1%. Like in Georgia, Biden was not only the first Democrat to carry the state since Bill Clinton, but his victory was largely due to the rapid growth and diversification of its lone major metropolitan area, Phoenix. Now in 2024, Trump was dominating in the polls before Biden dropped out, and now he continues to lead Harris, albeit by again a narrower margin, two points in the latest average. This lead is almost identical to his margin in Georgia as both states continue to trend similarly. His current lead is driven by the latest New York Times slash Siena College poll, which does have him up by five points right now in Arizona. And then as for the prediction markets, again, Trump has a 63% chance of winning in Arizona. Those are the best odds that he has in any of the seven key battlegrounds, even better than Georgia and North Carolina. And on my electoral map, I have Arizona as a tilt Trump state. That adds 11 electoral votes to his growing tally, and that pushes him past the critical 270 mark. He now sits at 274 electoral votes, while Harris remains at 163, with 101 electoral votes still up for grabs across the western U.S. as we head into the 10 p.m. poll closings, which include Montana, Utah, and Nevada. Now Trump is almost certain to win both Montana and Utah, while Nevada remains as our last battleground state. With only six electoral votes, it doesn't carry the same weight as any of the other battlegrounds, but it is just as competitive. Biden carried Nevada by 2.4% in 2020, identical to Clinton's margin from 2016, even though the nation as a whole shifted bluer between those elections. In fact, 2020 marked the first time that Nevada voted to the right of the nation since 2004. Republicans then followed that up by flipping the governor's office in 2022, and they received more votes for the U.S. House than Democrats for the first time in decades. Now in 2024, no other state had shifted harder to the right in the polls while Biden remained in the race, as Trump led by 5.5 points prior to the president's withdrawal, an incredible 8-point swing since the 2020 election. But again, with Harris now headlining the Democratic ticket, it has shifted back to Democrats, as she leads by about half a point in the latest average of five polls. Meanwhile, on Polymarket, we see identical odds as over in Pennsylvania, Harris at 51% and Trump at 49%, another coin flip. Yet with that said, unlike Pennsylvania, I think the fundamentals here favor Harris slightly. With Nevada's relatively low turnout compared to the other swing states, Harris's fundraising advantage and presumably stronger ground game could play a bigger role. Plus, his proximity to her home state of California might provide her with a small geographical boost. For those reasons, I would give Harris the slight edge in this coin flip race. 
All right, now one hour later, we arrive at our penultimate poll closing at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. The polls will close in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and California. Trump is sure to win in Idaho, while Kamala Harris will sweep each of the West Coast states, securing the Pacific Blue Wall for Democrats for the ninth consecutive cycle. That includes her home state of California, which does have the largest electoral prize on the map, 54 electoral votes. And that leaves us with just the non-contiguous states of Alaska and Hawaii, with polls closing at midnight Eastern. Now Alaska is safely in Trump's column, while Hawaii is safe for Kamala Harris. No surprises in either of those two states. And so, with that, the final electoral college projection stands at Trump with 291 electoral votes, leading Harris with 247. The former president flips Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia back into the Republican column, all states he won back in 2016, while Kamala Harris holds on to Michigan and Nevada. The race does remain extremely close in each of these battlegrounds, with the potential, of course, still for the race to shift either way in the coming weeks. That does it for this 2024 presidential election map prediction and analysis. Feel free to let me know whether you agree or disagree with these ratings in the comments below. Shout out to my channel members on screen here. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below as well, and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.